Walters been as hot? After he'd like this, I ain't scared no more of that place the deacon talks about. After he'd like this, I ain't even scared of the deacon! <laughs> Stand the corn over in the holler? Yeah. Well, it ain't standing anymore. It's burned to a crisp. Won't there be no corn at all, Pa? There won't be five years in the whole five acres. Taters burned up. Oats burned up. Corn burned up. What are we gonna do after? Pray, Sister Elvira. Pray as you never prayed before. Tomorrow night at 8 o'clock at Oak Grove. Howdy. Howdy, Deacon Hammerhead. Howdy, folks. Howdy. Can I go to the prayer meeting, Ma? Can I, huh? Well, you certainly can, my child. Your voice will be heard as well as the elders. Better. It's a lot louder. And how is Brother Cicero standing this weather? Laying down in the horse trough. Hmm? Oh, Cicero! <coughs> Cicero! Wake up, Cicero! 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 Wake up! Wake up! Wake up, Cicero! The deacon's here! Cicero! The deacon's here! The deacon's here! I reckon you better not figure on us coming to that meeting, deacon. Why not, Brother Abner? Because we won't be here tomorrow night. What are you saying, Abner? I'm saying we're giving up this place and moving on, Ellie. Moving on? Moving on! Moving on! Oh, shut up, Carl. Where are we going, Abner? I don't know, but any place will beat this. This soil's so worn out, we couldn't raise a decent crop if it did get rain. You and the rest of the folks ought to come and go along with us, Deacon. This place was good enough for our grand folks. It's good enough for us. I can't see that. Your grandpappy was looking for something better when he come here, wasn't he? Well, yes. Ours come here because the sheriff was chasing him. If your grandpappy could come here looking for something better, why can't we move on for the same reason? Abner's right. You should not lose hope, neighbors. Hope? Why, for the last six years, we've been hoping and planting. Planting and hoping. Now all we got to carry us through the winter is hope. Yeah, and you can't get fat on that. Deacon, we're going to find us a new home somewhere. And by this time tomorrow, we're going to be on our way. <laughs> Way down yonder in the Ozark Mountains, folks don't know much about books or counting. Lived old Zeke, an odd galoo. All he knew was how to shoot. He had a gal and he'd always tell her never to monkey with a city feller. City chap came without fail, and Zeke, he shot him on the Ozark Trail, on the Ozark Trail. That's where he shot him on the Ozark Trail. They come and got him. Zeke, he saved his family's name. But since that city feller came, Zeke's gal don't act the same on the Ozark Trail. Hey, Ma, are we still in the United States? That's an ignorant question. Of course we are. <laughs> we are, ain't we, Abner? We ain't crossed no ocean yet, so I reckon we are. Watch out for that dog, Cicero. Stop, Cicero! There's a train coming! Wow! For heaven's sake, Cicero! I didn't say stop on the track! Ma, Pa! There's a train coming! Oh, Ma, Pa! Ma, do something! Take the brake off, Cicero! Let's get out of here! Get up, Violet! Uh, Cicero! Oh, Missouri! Slap him, Cicero! Slap him! Oh! Get up, Missouri! Let me out of here! Mom, Mom, what are we gonna do? Get out! Get out! Get out, Missouri! Get out, Missouri! Get out! Get out! Oh, for heaven's sake, sit your way the fire under it! Bill, get up!
Get out of here. Get him out there, Casey. Jump off. Get off. All of you. Don't come back. Come on. Beat it. Come on, Viola. Get in. Come on. Uh-uh. Not till you get to the other side of them tracks, Doc. Sure, if I'm aboard. Yeah, always room for one more. Well, thank you, lady. Come on, fellas. Well, hey, we said one more. That's me, lady. Thank you. Well, for heaven's sake. Coming here for Ma? Oh, shut up. Oh. Hey, Smokey, look who's coming. Hey, fellas. Look, it's the Breeze Kid. What are you doing pulling the mule around? Oh, it belongs to the weavers. They were giving us a lift, but the mule got too smart for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want you to meet the weavers, fellas. This is Abner, Elviri, Cicero, and Violi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, welcome to Utopia. Hiya, pie crust. What do you got in the menu? Stew. Could add some water to it. We got company for supper. But I don't like stew. Don't worry, sister. It ain't stew no more. It's soup! smart. Who taught it to talk like that? Cicero. He since it started talking, he quit. <laughs> Have a cigar? No, thanks. I don't smoke. We've got some pretty nice ones. Uh, you want? How about you? Uh, you want? You know, there's nothing like a good cigar after a good meal. <laughs> Did you hurt yourself? No, just settled my dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon eating's kind of uncertain with you fellas, ain't it? Oh, little. Well, it wouldn't be if you fellas went to work and quit being panhandlers. Why, shame on you, Viola. You'll have to excuse her. She's ignorant. She don't know the difference between panhandlers and tramps. <laughs> Mercy, did I say something wrong? Well, we don't like being called tramps either, Mrs. Weaver. Weaver. Oh, I'm <laughs> You're just as ignorant as I am. Yep. Being a right curious nature, Breeze, I take it kindly if you just tell me how come you fellas to take up a life like this. Oh, I don't know. I guess it's troubles mostly, Abner. Troubles we're trying to run away from or forget. Some people say we're wrong. I don't know. Maybe they're right. But we're not on relief, and we're not hurting anyone but ourselves. Say, Breeze, is that fellow you call Doc, is he really a doctor? Sure is. Why, he used to be one of the greatest surgeons in the country. 
You don't say. He did so say. Do you want another one? I studied to be a lawyer myself. And notes that fellow playing your pump organ used to be a well-known songwriter. Well, I declare. Mr. Breeze tells me you're a songwriter. Shh. What song you writing? Shh. Say, you read music? Well, I hope to kiss a pig. I wonder if you'd play this over for me. I'd like to hear how it sounds. Well, I ain't played for some time. I'm a little rusty. I'll play it. He asked me. Excuse me. I was a child, no one to love or care for me. Knocked around all over, kind of grew up wild. My home's wherever I may be. I'm just breezing along with the breeze. Trailing the rails, roaming the sea. I, the birdies that sing in the trees, pleasing to live, living to please. The sky is the only roof I have over my head And when I'm weary Mother Nature makes me a bed I'm just going along as I please Reason along Reason with the breeze Everybody sing. Just breathing along with a breeze. Trail on the rain. Roman not seen. Like the birdies that sing in the trees. A pleasing to live. While living to breathe. The sky is the only roof I have over my head. And when I'm weary. get a good look at you. Don't you call us tramps. What's the idea, Sheriff? We're looking for a man that robbed Mr. Barton's department store over at Riverview about an hour ago. Well, you won't find him here. Wouldn't find any of you here if a city councilor had listened to me. You don't need to be looking at my man Abner. In 20 years, he ain't been out of my sight long enough to rob a department store. You needn't look at my Uncle Cicero, neither. In 20 years, he ain't been awake long enough to rob a department store. <laughs> <laughs> Here he is. This is the man. What? Why, you're crazy. This man hasn't been out of camp all evening. Has he, fellas? No! no. Sure this is the man? Well, I ought to know the man that robbed me. Put the cuffs on him. Hey, you're making a mistake. I didn't do it, and I'm not going with you. Oh, yes, you will. <laughs>
Put your hand over your mouth when you yawn. Yeah, and get bit? <laughs> Where's that bed you promised us, Breeze? <laughs> Just follow me. This must be the main street. Well, they sure don't keep it very clean. Sure is a quiet place. I suppose everybody's in bed. I wish I was. Well, you will be pretty quick. Jeepers, what did you do that for? So we can go to bed. You mean go to jail? <laughs> That's where our beds are. How's that? Well, in just a minute, a policeman will grab us. And in the morning, after a good breakfast, We'll do some work to pay for the damage, and then we'll be on our way again. Well, dog my cats, that's a right good idea. Yeah, it sure is. I don't see no policemen. Yeah, I, I guess they didn't hear us. I'll rouse them. You! 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 <laughs> Lance of Goshen's, I guess I got them all up. <laughs> oh, Ellie, that's just the echo. It was, huh? Well, let's try it again. Come on. Yeah! 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 My land, them policemen's as hard to wake up as Cicero. There's one of them telephonies over there. I'll call him up. What's the matter with you?
you policemen. Us hobos just broke a window, and we want you to come down and get us. And tell them to hurry up. What? What? I said tell them to hurry. And hurry up about it, too. What'd they say? Nothing. Nobody answered. Ah. Goodbye. Let's go find the police station. Yeah, let's do. Come See, on. That's Which good way idea. Is it, I wonder? Yeah, let's try. Come on. There must be somebody at home. The lights are burning. Well, we'll soon find out. Here, let me heave this one, will you? Okay. Oh, shucks, there was no window there. Must be somebody here ahead of us. <coughs> Springtime is coming, sweet lonesome bird. Your echo in the woodland I hear. <coughs> Down in the meadow so sweetly you're singing while the moonlight is shining so clear. But I know he's away. Sweet fern, sweet fern, oh tell me is my darling still true? Sweet fern, sweet fern, sweet fern, sweet fern, I'll be just as happy as you. You hoo hoo. Well, that's the funniest sounding echo I ever heard. Who's an echo? Hmm. What the tarnation going on down there? We're trying to get in jail. Well, you're going to a lot of trouble. Just walk in, the door's open. Well, rustle my bustle. <laughs> Howdy, folks. Hibbs is my name. Bumblebee Hibbs, they call me. Cause I buzz around so much. <laughs> I reckon you're looking for a nice lodging? Why, yeah. You come to the right place. Glad to have your company. But first, I'll have to ask you to sign this register. Uh-uh. Remember what Grandpa said. Never give him your right name. Oh, shucks. This is just to keep my record straight. I ain't going to put no charge against you. You could have broken every window in town. It wouldn't have made no difference. The merchants have all moved away. Just sign right here. Why did they leave here, Mr. Hibbs? Why? On account of that river out yonder. She looks quiet and peaceful now. But every spring she goes on a rampage and floods this whole shebang. We tried to get the state to build a levy, but we couldn't get nowhere. So the folks got disgusted and moved out one by one. You mean there's too much water? Too much? You see that water mark? Many's the time I had to come through that door in a rowboat and duck to keep from cracking my beam. Well, kick my shins. And we had to give up our place because we didn't have no water. How come you're here yet? The city council forgot to fire me. <laughs> There's where they slipped up. Cause the wages are piling up on them. <laughs> 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 well, are you all set? Well, follow me and I'll show to yourselves. <laughs> oh, I mean Ben. Ben! Ben! Ha, ha, ha! Ha, ha, ha! It's the first time I ever saw a crow in a pigeon hole. <laughs> Take any cell you want. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night. <laughs>
Oh, Bumblebee! Ah, uh, Bumblebees! Bumblebee? Bumblebees! Where are you? Where are you? Oh! Oh! A man! At your service. No, I mean in the dead. Oh, that's just Cicero. Didn't you ever see anyone like him before? Oh, yes, but, but I had to pay admission. But who are you? Oh, just a friend of yours. I hope. Oh, what, 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 what's the matter? What, what, what's going on? Huh? What, what, what's the trouble? Huh? What, 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 oh, good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Bumblebee. What's the screech about? That man in the desk frightened me. He scared me, too, the first time I seen him. That ain't no way to talk about your uncle. Uh, folks, I want you to meet Nancy Williams. Her grandma was a founder of this town and made it what it is. Or what it was before it was what it is. <laughs> Howdy. Howdy. These folks stopped in to spend the night with me. Yes, and we're going to have breakfast with him, too. Well, ain't we? Mr. Bree said we was. Sorry, folks, but the kitchen's closed. That's one accommodation we had to cut out. Ain't no cause to apologize, Bumblebee. No, Mr. Bumble, you've been mighty nice to us already. Well, why don't you all come up and have breakfast at my house? Oh, think of the truth. We sure wouldn't. Where do you live? Looks like pretty good farmland around here. None better if you could keep the gold iron place from being flooded. Are you sure your grandma ain't going to be too put out having us all drop in on her like this? Oh, grandma, they love company. It cheers her up. Is she feeling poorly? Well, she doesn't get out very much. You see, she lost her sight about eight years ago. That's too bad. Yes, it is. But she's kept her chin up pretty well. I'd like to ask you folks not to say anything to her about the condition of the town. Things were prospering when her eyes went bad. And on account of her being wrapped up in the place, heart and soul, we just kept on letting her think it ain't changed very much. Nancy tells me that you and your family are looking for a new place to settle down, Mr. Weaver. Yes, we are, Mrs. Williams. The dry spells burn us out of our old place. We never have dry spells here. I'll say you don't. From what we saw, it looks like you don't talk with your mouth full, Viola. You were saying, Miss Williams, I was going to suggest that you consider Williamsville. I think it's the finest town in the world. Of course, I don't get around anymore. But Nancy and Bumblebee keep me posted. And the way we've progressed, in spite of our failure to get the levy, has been a never-ending source of comfort to me. Do I hear an automobile coming, Bumblebee? Yep. It sure parts the river view. I wonder what brings him here. First, I reckon. You mean you sent for him? Heck no. We ran away from him. And we'd better run again, Ma. I don't understand. Well, you see, we had a sort of a ruckus with him and his men over at Riverview last night. Yeah, a fellow named Barton accused one of our friends of robbing his store. Barton, I might have noticed. He can cause more trouble than a busted hornet's nest. Cuss, cuss, he's on my hide. If Sheriff Fox comes here looking for you, he'll not find you as long as your guest's in my house. Now get out of sight, quick. Mrs. Williams, you're a peach. Peach? She's a whole orchard. Thank you. You and Bumblebee stop piling the dishes so he won't see how many are sleeping here. Hurry!
find you here feeding your face, Bumblebee. Oh, hello, Pops. <laughs> Is that Sheriff Pops from Riverview? Yeah, that's me, Mrs. Williams. How are you and Nancy this morning? Just fine, fine thank, thank you. you. Won't you come in and have a cup of coffee? Thanks, ain't got time. Seen any hobos passing here, Bumblebee? Hobos? Yeah. No, can't say that I have. What do you want with them? Had some trouble over at Riverview last night, and one of them hit Silas Barton over the head with a git fiddle. Conked him on the beam? Mm. Hurt bad? I hope. Tricked you and me, not as bad as I'd like. What made him so mad, he swore he'd have every hobo tossed in jail for six months. Do you know what these people look like, Sheriff? Not all of them. There's a couple of women amongst them and a funny-looking rube with a crow. There he is. Stop it, Mr. Aubrey. Stop it, Mr. Aubrey. If you see anybody look suspicious around here, I'd appreciate it if you'd let me know. I don't think you'll find any of them around here. Well, come on. Talk, talk, talk. What in thunder is that? Uh, is that? <laughs> That's the cat. Must be sneaking up on the mouse. Oh. <laughs> well. This warrant's only good for a week. And if them hobos stay out of sight for that long, well, I won't be able to arrest them. Well, see you later. <laughs> so long, folks. The hands of the steeple clock pointed at 12. Slowly it told the hour, the hour of reckoning. A taxi cab skidded to the curb in front of the apartment building. A hapless figure leaped out. Only one thought filled Roger's mind as he bounded up the steps and rushed into the hallway. Would Bramson be there or was he too late? He paused at the foot of the wide staircase. Softly he called, Francine, Francine. There was no answer. An icy chill swept over him. He called again, loudly, fearfully. Francine! A second later, she was being crushed in arms, which the passion of his yearning had turned into bands of steel. That fellow was a regular Don John, wasn't he? Bands of steel. He sounded more like a hay baler. Francine, Francine, he murmured again and again between kisses. And the answering pressure of her lips against his told him he was not too late. The end. <laughs> what are you doing, Violi? Shame on you for tormenting poor Coco like that. I was just giving him a merry-go-round ride. Well, this ain't no merry-go-round. <laughs> now, just look at that poor thing. You've got him so dizzy, you don't know whether he's coming or going. Now, if you want to play this phonograph, don't play a crow, play a record. Yes, ma'am. Funny record, folks, it's funny as a hundred jokes. You all know how a record walks. Here's the kind that really talks. Listen, Mr. Bumblebee. Oh, me? Yes, sirree. Get some chalk tobacco pop. Chaw it till you're told to stop. Pick up that mandolin and let the song begin. And Cicero, you play your old banjo. They're in the rocking chair. Yes. Keep rocking there. Tell me, tell me what to do. I'll be right back to you. You could buy that music stand. Just take that light ring in your hand. I'll bet he plays it simply grand. Never mind the compliments. Play the music with the gem. I play all my notes by ear. Play it on the chandelier. 
Now play that ocean shell And play that dinner bell The tray of lemonade Oh, come on, don't be afraid I never played these things before But this is just what I adore You are playing mighty well You all play mighty well I will play the organ now Play it, play it I will play my fiddle and how. To bring this to an end. Not yet. Not yet. Now. That was wonderful. It's been years since this old house. What is it, Granny? Those pains in your head again? What's about pains? Well, Granny's had them off and on ever since her eyes started to fail. Oh, well, we'll have to take care of that. Anything I can do? Thanks. I feel better already. They leave as quickly as they come. Well, you just sit right there and take it easy. We're going to go out and do the dishes now that we've had time to shake our dinner down. Come on, Violet. Bumblebee tells me you're, you're drifting on tomorrow. About time, don't you think? We've been here a week. Where will you go? Where does the wind go? I don't think I'd like that kind of life. No? Well, it doesn't appeal to me so much anymore. Then why don't you give it up? What would you suggest I do? Hang out my shingle in Williamsville? At least it isn't Williamsville's fault that doesn't amount to anything. Say, there isn't anything personal in that remark, is there? Nancy! Nancy! Coming, Granny! What is it, Granny? What's happened? The doctor says that I'll get my eyesight back. That I'll be able to see again. Well, glory be. But, but other doctors have said there, there wasn't a chance. It's a very rare case. The symptoms are identical with the case I had when, well, I'm positive our eyesight can be restored. Oh, Granny, Granny, oh, sounds too wonderful to be true. When do you figure you'll do it, Doc? Well, I won't do it myself, but I'll take it to someone who will do it. Just think, I'll be able to see again. To see you, Bumblebee, the town, my town. With all the wonderful changes that you and Bumblebee have been telling me about. <clears throat> well, I reckon all this excitement's been too much for you, Miss Williams. I reckon you better go up and rest a while. Violi, will you uh, take her up to her room? What'll we do, Bumblebee? That's what I'm thinking, honey. Yeah, when she sees her town, it's going to be a terrible shock. It'll break her heart. I'm afraid I've caused complications. Oh, you mustn't feel that way, Doctor. I wouldn't change that part of it for the world, but, well, I'm frightened. If we only had that dang levy, things wouldn't be so dang bad. Dang it. You mean the levy would make the town prosperous again? Put it right back on the map. Then the thing to do is to get it. That fellow Barton's been lobbying to get it for years. Might as well try to get the moon. We'll start with the levy. Howdy. Hello. Hello there. How are you? Is the governor at home? Yes, she is right now, but he won't be for very long. No, he's getting ready to go out and make a speech. Oh, well, we better hurry then, Abby. Oh, see, now, wait a minute, you folks. Wait a minute. If you think that you're going to get in to see the governor, you better have another think. You know, common folks like us can't just barge in on a big shot like him. No, you've got to go through a lot of red tape first. 
Red tape? Well, where is it? We'll go through it. Uh, no, no, wait a minute. You can't cut through red tape with a knife. Uh, wait a minute. Put, put, put that thing away, will you, George Washington? <laughs> oh, look, what I mean to say is, folks, that if you want to get in to see the governor, you've got to see a whole bunch of other folks first. Starting out with his doorman and ending up with his secretary. And then by the time that you see them, there'll be a new governor and you got to start all over again. So you folks might just as well go home and forget all about it. Can't do it. We got to have the governor's help right away. Oh, you want him to do you a favor, huh? Well, what are you going to do for him? Him? Why, sure. You do him a favor, he does you a favor. Otherwise, no favors. That's politics. Oh, you mean one of them, you scratch my back, I'll scratch your back things, huh? <laughs> yeah, huh? now you're beginning to catch on. Oh. Huh? Well, Abner, I reckon we better figure some way to scratch the governor's back. Come on. We'll have to hurry, my dear. I'm late. Oh. Now step on it, Charles. Since I have taken over the governorship of this state, I have reduced our expenditures. I have reduced our expenditures. I have reduced our expenditures. No matter how you say it, dear, they'll know you're lying. Why, Lucian, this isn't the way to the auditorium. Hmm? It isn't? No! Charles, you're on the wrong road. Why, that isn't Charles! Why, uh, who are you? Uh, where's my chauffeur? Your time has come. You've been shoveling it out to us, now we're going to shovel it out to you. The Hill Gang. The Hill Gang? Well, I never even heard of them. Well, neither did I, but what difference does that make? I'm on the spot. Gracious, is your insurance paid up? Now look here, my good man. I'll give you $10,000 if you let us go. Twenty thousand. Oh, there's some people coming. Help! 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 Did somebody yell? What's going on? What's the matter? <laughs> We've been taken for a ride. By a gangster. A gangster? Say, it's a lucky thing for you we happen to come along. Yes, it certainly is. If ever I can do anything to repay you, just let me know. I'm the governor and you've saved my life. No, we didn't. We just scratched your back. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the operation has made Granny 30 years younger. I never saw her so happy. First she laughs, then she cries. <laughs> It'll be at least three weeks before the bandages can be removed, so we should be home by then, where all of us can celebrate the big event. By the great horn spoon, we certainly will celebrate it, too. <laughs> Well, snap my galluses. Look who's here. Look, folks. Marthy's going to be all right. That's fine. We're awful glad. Well, you certainly don't look very happy about it. Well, we can get the levy. That's good. If the town is thriving and industrious and deserves it. That's bad. The governor and the committee's coming on the 15th to look us over. That's terrible. When they see this town without any people in it, we're sunk. Poor Marthy. See, why couldn't we get some of the folks to come in and clean the town up and pretend to live here? You mean from back home? Yeah, the committee'd never know the difference. Well, say, that's an idea. And I can get a lot of my friends to lend a hand, too. By Jupiter, it might work, but we'll have to hurry, because we ain't got much time.
You've done a fine job, mighty fine, and you've done it in record time. There sure can't be any complaint about the way things looks now. It's just about the cleanest bunch of stores I have ever seen. <laughs> yeah, and about the emptiest. They look all right on the outside, but there ain't nothing in them. How are you going to get around that? Easy. Listen, Abner will be the mayor, and he'll declare the 15th a legal holiday. Then all the stores will be closed, and we won't need nothing in them. Yeah, yeah but what about us? We don't look like no prosperous citizens, you know. Yeah, we need some clothes. Sure do. These rags won't fool nobody. If we're going to meet the governor with a band, we ought to have some musical instruments. And we need new furniture for Mrs. Williams' house and groceries for the party. We ought to have some good-looking automobiles on the street. Cheapers, creepers, Abner. We did slip up. What are we going to do? Oh, search me, Elia. That cuss at Barton got us into this cuss at fix. Well, let Barton help us out of it, then. <laughs> Boys, load her right up. You're doing fine. Keep right at it. You can't get away with this. You ain't got no right to put that sign up unless you mean it. This is what's called unethical business practices. You ain't careful, you'll get yourself into trouble. But what will Barton say? got their extra dresses? Sure have. Oh, yes. We're all set. Come on, girls. Now, let's go. Well, I guess we're all set. How much? $2,100. Charge it. Charge it? But you have no charge account here. We'll open one. Yeah, but I don't know you. <laughs> that makes us even. I don't know you either. <laughs> Call Mr. Barton. What's the matter? Ain't you big enough to run the business by yourself? I prefer that you talk to Mr. Barton. Madam. What is it, Tilson? Well, these people... You? What are you doing here? Well, we're just trying to buy some clothes. Oh, well, now, that's uh, fine. <laughs> On credit. Credit? Sure, our credit's good. That card says so. We're co-signers. Don't need any. Oh, yes, you do. You can't open a charge account without the proper references. Oh, don't we? Well, you just wait a minute. Now, you look here. No co-signers. No red tape. No delay, no payments for 30 days. Oh, that doesn't mean a thing in this case. Ah, false advertising, huh? Do you know you could go to jail for that? You ain't got no business putting out signs that don't mean nothing. I've got a great mind to report you to the State Better Business Bureau. And I will, too, if you let out one more peep. Come on, folks, let's get out of here. Yes, business, come on. indeed, and a nice appearing bunch of people, too. Why, every person has on a new suit or a new dress. And look at those store windows. They're as modern as in our big city. Thank <laughs> you. 
After the things I've heard, I'm surprised to see such a wide awake little town. The end's believing, Senator. And this town was named after you, Mrs. Williams. Yes, it was, Governor. She founded it. Is that so? Well, you have a town to be proud of. Thank you. I'll be so happy to see it again. Here's your sandwich, Governor. Thank you. That man certainly looks familiar. I'd swear I've seen him someplace. You sure would, if you knew where. <laughs> oh, don't pay any attention to Viola. She's always funning. No! Anything else for you, gentlemen? No, thanks. You, Governor? Uh, no, thank you. I think I have an ample sufficiency. <laughs> I've never met such friendly people. I feel as though I've been in the town as long as they have. This state should have more people like them. Well, the woods are full of them. It's going to be a great pleasure to help these people. You mean you're going to give us the levy? I can't see any reason why we shouldn't, Mrs. Williams. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, gentlemen. The folks are sure going to be glad to hear this. Folks! Hey, folks! Williamsville is going to get the levy! ask you to come to this party. I want to see the governor. What about? About some things you ought to know. Well, you can't see. Oh, yes, I can, and you ain't gonna keep me out. Well, all right. He's in here. <laughs> you people think you're pretty smart, don't you? But you ain't getting away with a thing. Not with Silas Barton. <laughs> Open this door. Get the music started quick. Tell him play loud. Let me out of here. Open this door! The governor's coming! Oh, the governor, the governor, the good old governor, the governor, the good old governor. You calling me, General? No, we didn't turn it! Governor, the governor, governor, the 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 governor, Swing on your party like swinging on a gate. Come on, folks, everybody shout. There's a bird in a cage and he's trying to get out. Come in a buggy, come in a wagon. Three wheels off an actual dragon. Halfway round, promenade back. Grab your partner and ball the jack.
you could play so long without stopping. You never know what you can do to your act, Governor. Well, I can't dance any longer. Oh. No, besides, it's time for us to be on our way. Howard, Fulton. Oh, watch your hurry. Oh, it's time to go. So what is, Governor? Come on, get your coats on. We've had a wonderful time. We certainly have, and thank you for your hospitality. It's been a great pleasure to have you, Governor. The Governor and the committee's leaving. Good. Come on, boys, and keep playing. Come on, everybody. Committee for Fools. What's this? Who are you? I'm Silas Barton, and I know what I'm talking about. Don't pay no attention to him, Governor. You think this town's on a level, but it's a fake. These people are hobos and hillbillies. Come here to populate this place for one day. You're mistaken, Mr. Barton. Of course he is. No, no, I'm not. I haven't got a dime in the world by the clothes they're wearing, the furniture in this house, the food that you've been eating. They got on credit from my stores in Riverview just to put on this show. Tomorrow they'll be gone. The town will be deserted, and you'll be the laughing stock of the whole country. So, you tried to trick me. Somewhere in the statutes there's a law that covers a thing like this. When I find it, I'm going to put every one of you in jail. Marthy. I'd give my right arm if this hadn't happened. We only lied to you, Granny, because we thought it was best that way. I understand. Friends, I want to thank you for all you've tried to do for me. If Williamsville wasn't what it is, I'd be proud to have you live in it and call your neighbors. I wouldn't mind having her for a neighbor. Me neither. Well, why don't we stay then? Say, Abner, I wonder if it'd make a difference to the governor if we really did stay here. Maybe it would. Most of us have been looking for a chance to settle down. Maybe this is it. Being a gentleman for a day ain't so bad. I think I could go for a hunk of it myself. What do you say, fellas? Come on, Eddie, let's catch the governor. All right, let's do it. Well, Abner, what do you think? Well, I'm sure it's the best thing. When the papers get hold of this story, we're ruined. Better pull up, Mayfield. What's the meaning of this? We just want to tell you, you don't have to be afraid of being the laughing stock like Mr. Barton said. Why not? Well, you see, because you was nice enough to bring the committee to Williamsville, we got a lot of poor folks who didn't have homes and was just drifting around to come there for one day. But now they're going to stay permanent. They are? Yep. And there ain't nothing about that for folks to laugh at. You'll be the greatest man in the whole country. Well, boys, we can't let those poor people live there without having that levy. We certainly can. I should say not. <laughs> Besides, <clears throat> we must remember the newspapers. Thank you, Governor. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, Governor. Governor. Thank you. Now I know who you are. Oh, wait a minute, Governor. Please, please. Never mind, never mind. It's all right, I understand. <laughs> What's the joke? <laughs> Drive on, Mayfield. <laughs> Goodbye, Hill folks. I'll see you all at the dedication of the levee. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the bride, here comes...
comes the bride. She'll be so happy with Breeze by her side. My, ain't he proud? Gee, what a crowd. Just look at Cicero, dressed up so loud. No more will Breeze, Breeze along with the breeze. He'll build a home mid the flowers and the trees. They'll settle down right in this town with the friendly neighbors to help all around.